this in your kitty cat? Who doesn't want some of that? What is up, sapiosexuals? Thank you for turning on Sex in South Beach with your girl, Dr. Sanjaya, America's sex educator. So the sex situation we're getting into today is all about putting THC in your sugar box. Should you do it? What happens? Does your vagina get high? Woo! We're going to find out and we're going to get to the bottom of this very, very important topic. Should we be medicating our vaginas with a little bit of THC? And if we do, will it make sex better? We have Katie Enright here to help us unpackage this issue and get to the bottom of it. Katie is going to help us learn exactly how our vaginas do respond to THC. And, you know, if you're a man out there listening, uh, you might want to perk those ears up because most of you want your woman to be like, into it, right? You want us to respond to, you know, that big heart mm, 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 that you're bringing us, right? So the great thing about Katie, and I'm super, super excited to have her here, is that she was a celibate nun, and now she's a sex expert who makes a THC-infused lube that makes you come. So you got it. She is the nun who makes you come. I know you never thought you'd hear that sentence. After a chance encounter while Katie was studying abroad, um, she met a guy and she decided, you know what? Mm, nun, man, nun, man. And she decided a uh, man. Since then, she has founded Lavinia. And Lavinia is a sexual wellness cannabis brand that puts the power of THC into a lubricant to enhance pleasure during sex. Thank you so much for being here, Katie. We're super excited to have you. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm really excited to be here. So first, you see I'm wearing like my navy blue button up because I went to Catholic school for 12 years. <laughs> and every time I think about a nun, I think I must cover up and wear navy blue um, because I think that's what God likes, or at least that's what they told me God likes. <laughs> um, and they never told me anything about sex. I remember once asking my biology teacher, you know, what is this wet that I hear about? You know, girls are talking about getting wet. And her answer was, you'll find out when you're ready. So <laughs> I'm super interested in learning why you wanted to become a nun, what made you decide that route, and then we're going to figure out how you transitioned into this expert you are now. Yes. Wow. It's, it's a lot to unpack <laughs> when you say it like that. You're so right. So uh, just to clarify, I didn't actually become a nun. I discerned if I wanted to become a nun. So I decided once I met Francois, it was kind of like the fork in the road and I decided to not go the nunhood route. Ah. But yeah, you know, I just really, um, I also went to Catholic school. I was just really devout. I really wanted to make the world a better place. I really wanted to go to like um, an orphanage. I wanted to like just be a good person and provide value to the world. That it really was a very innocent, um, uh, an innocent reason for wanting to become a nun. You oh, know? wow. That is really cool. So you wanted to make the world a better place. And I went to 12 years of Catholic schools. And I know some of my girlfriends did think that they wanted to be nuns because it's kind of like, if you want to be closer to God, you want to be more God-like, how do I get closer? Yeah, totally. Totally. I had a really, um, I had a really good experience. So I think that it's kind of like when you study religion or when you're around really religious people, uh, like the people that you're exposed to really influence your experience of the religion. And I had a really positive, I know so many people that have had a really negative experience, but I had a really positive experience. Um, and I'm trying to think part of it too, was that I felt like not that many people were going on to become nuns. And I felt like they were going to become extinct at a certain point. And I was like, oh no, I have to become a nun so that it, <laughs> there are nuns in the world. Um, but you know, it's, it's kind of funny because now I realize like I still add value. It's just one orgasm at a time, you know, <laughs> instead of one prayer at a time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So um, you met Francois. Um, I was he French? I mean, <laughs> he was a Belgium knight, Sir Francois. I mean, it was it wow. was so amazing. So basically, I I was studying here in the states, and I was nobody 
wanted to be a nun, right? Like I was going through college. I was in a sorority. Like this was so unique. No, like no one else I talked to. So I actually decided to study abroad in Ireland to kind of do my discernment period and decide if I actually wanted to go through the process of start to, starting to become like a full on nun. And um, when I was there, I was randomly assigned to live in a dorm room with four guys and four girls. And it was super fun because it was literally like the real world before that was even a thing. And it was like seven different countries so we had all of these like cultural um, mixes that were coming in, you know, and um, Francois was just randomly assigned to live in the same spot, right? Not in obviously the same apartment, but just like uh, in the same spot. And it was so fun because, um, you know, I'm American. And when you're American, you don't quite understand what that means because it's your norm, right? And so he was um, Belgium and he spoke five different languages and he was just so uh, culturally uh open and understood. And it was just, I don't know, it was just, I never quite experienced anybody like that before. Um, and then I, and then he, <laughs> he used to um, make me breakfast in bed every morning. And so he'd come with little tray with French press coffee and, uh, and toast with Nutella. And he'd be like, little kitty, it's just time to get up. And he, he would like, just put it on my bed just because he was just a nice guy. And um, that was just never my experience in the States. <laughs> Okay, so were you having sex with him when he was making no. you breakfast? No. no, and honestly, I don't even think we smooched at that point because he... Um it, 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 it was so innocent, right? Because we lived together, we, we, we had so much exposure to each other that was so innocent. And so like, um, just really genuinely getting to know him, like we really got to know each other as people. And it's so funny because like back then, like the fashion trend was like baggy clothes, right? In the States and in Europe, it wasn't, it was like everyone popped their collar up and wore really tight jeans. And I like, didn't know what to do with that. I didn't know what to make of it. I was like, why, why are their jeans so tight? I don't get it. <laughs> funny so you were taken with Francois and during your period of discernment and you decided the nun route was not for you yeah so I went to the Sistine Chapel and I was praying and I was like kind of uh, you know just praying that like the I think that really the ultimate motive, which was that I didn't want there to not be any more nuns. Right. And that, that, and I felt like I had like a communication with God where God was like, that's not your, your burden. That's not your cross to bear. If you want to get married, if you want to have kids, that's what you should do. You should really follow whatever you're passionate about. And so Francois then drove, um, from like Belgium to, to Rome and met me. And then we drove all throughout Italy together. Um, and it was very romantic, but still no sex. You know, I was going to be a nun. So you don't go from like <laughs> none to come overnight. So quick question. Had you ever had sex prior no. to mm -mm. this discernment period? No. Okay. So now you have to tell us you went through this discernment period. You decided not to become a nun. Was that because you had some great sex or just because you were so taken with Francois? You decided if I'm this taken with him then this is not my calling. Yeah, exactly. And I really wanted to be uh, like, I really want to be a mom at some point, I think. Um, and so that was kind of enough for me to be like, you know, I, I think that I, I can still add value to the world without becoming a nun. Awesome. So tell me then, Lavinia, now we're here talking about your THC infused lubricant. How did you get to yeah. make blue? Where's, where's yes. the bridge here? <laughs> there has to be a bridge between Francois and Lavinia. I want yes. to Well, it's so interesting, right? Because I was celibate for so long and because I was I was choosing to be celibate, I didn't really know anything about sex. So when I decided to become like a sexual person, I didn't understand how anything works. I was really insecure that I was going to be bad in bed, which nobody wants to be bad in bed. Right. And so I started to take like webinars and classes and tutorials. And, um, the thing is, is that it, it's, it's really kind of sad, our, our sexual education in schools, because it's very awkward. Like I, I remember it. It's like, it was yesterday. It was in fifth grade. And like the boys went in and talked to the gym teacher and the girls went in and talked to art, the other gym teacher, you know, it was separated. And and, and it was just so awkward and it wasn't a comfortable environment where you could ask questions and it was very giggly, but like, also you don't quite understand what's happening. You know, you don't quite understand the questions to ask, or um, there's just so many different components that go into a sexual experience. And so um, 
So that was kind of really my only education with sex. And so I actually like took webinars and tutorials about like, just to learn everything about sex, how to give better oral sex, understanding anal sex, understanding how like the components of it worked. And I really like, uh, put a lot of time and effort and energy into like education. And then it, what, what started to happen was really funny is like, then I became a sexual person and then I started to understand a lot about sex and, um, and then friends started to come to me about like asking questions or positions or size stuff or this, that, the other. And then I kind of became like a, a sex expert <laughs> because I had taken all these classes. Right. And a lot of times what happens is like, we don't ask questions. We don't communicate. We don't talk about it because that's how, when we were younger, that's what we were taught right like we were never at least I in my experience was never taught to have like a really open conversation and dialogue about sex and even if you choose abstinence it's still so important to know and be fully educated and have that knowledge and I really wish that I, I would have had that absolutely that. a lot of studies show that when you only have abstinence-based sex education you're actually at a greater risk than kids who have had sex education because you never expect to have sex. So when you're in the position, you're actually not prepared to do it. Exactly. And like you, I was also raised in an abstinence only environment going to Catholic school. But so you you became, a, you started wanting to understand sexuality. You educated yourself about sex. You became the sex expert for your community. People were asking you questions, telling you their problems. Oh my God, this guy's so big. How am I gonna handle it? Oh my God, I want to do two guys anal entry. Is that possible? They were coming to you with all of these questions. And I assume just from the data and all of my experience that a lot of women were also saying, you know what? I'm not having an orgasm during sex. Or you know what? There's some pain during sex or it's not feeling the way I want it to feel. So you didn't decide to make, you know, an erectile dysfunction product because Lord knows we don't have enough of those. You became a sex expert for all of your community. Tell me, how did all of the information they shared with you lead you to creating Lavinia? It's so fun. This is such a fun story. So I was actually um, training for my second marathon. I had run one marathon before and my recovery was terrible. So for my second one, I decided to do a ton of research and to incorporate recovery into my training. And that's where cannabis comes in. So I started to make my own bombs. When you're training for a marathon, it's like an hour and a half a day of training. It's really rigorous, very hard on your body, your back, your knees, your everything. And I started to make bombs in my kitchen for my lower back and my knee. And like within three minutes, all of my pain was gone. It was amazing. And I I was doing a ton of research about cannabis, trying to understand exactly what's happening and, and just to educate myself. And I read that you could use it to enhance your sexual experience. And I was like, that's crazy. How could using weed, like what as a topical? And I was like, I didn't understand it, but I was like, you know what, I'm going to try it. So I took some of the bomb that I made and I tried it and I had a really satisfying, really intense, really strong orgasm. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> like wow. this is insane. What happened? Why did this happen? What, what's going on? And, um, the thing is, is I was using coconut oil as my base and coconut oil for me is not a good lubricant. It almost instantly causes me to have a yeast infection. Um, but so I literally the next day went to a dispensary. Cause I was like, this is amazing. I don't know why cannabis is doing this. I don't know what's happening, but this enhanced my experience so much. I went to see if I could buy a sexual enhancing experience and that was not coconut oil based and they didn't have any. So you were making cannabis infused oil to help with your back and your knees and all the pain you were having from your marathon training. And through your research, you're like, huh, marijuana can cannabis can also improve sex. Hey, I'll try it. So you tried some of the balm that you made for your back and your legs and you had a really satisfying sex experience. Yep. So tell me, so now you're at the cannabis stores and you're looking for THC infused lube. You're at the dispensaries. Yep. And, and it didn't exist. I could not find it. So literally I started to make my own lube in my kitchen just for me, just because I wanted to have enhanced pleasure. Um, I wanted to have enhanced orgasms and I would literally just give it away to people that I loved. Right. I was like, you get a great orgasm and you get a great orgasm. And um, from there, I was bartending at the time and somebody came up to me and was like, are you the weed lube girl? And I was like, I am. 
And he's like, can I, can I get some of that? And I was like, of course. And he's like, I'll buy it from you. And as soon as he said, I'll buy it from you, something in my brain clicked because for me, it was always just a labor of love and something that I was passionate about. And, um, and once he said, I'll buy it from you, I was like, oh, oh yeah. Other people want this too. This is, this is a business. This is the, a stranger is requesting this. Awesome. That is so awesome. Then I started to do a ton of research in the space. And I realized that really the product that I wanted to create and it, it didn't exist. So I went through the process of hiring a PhD chemist and we did like 25 different formulations and we found the perfect orgasmic mix of THC and CBD. And, um, and then once we had the formula, then I was like, okay, we're good to go. So I have a question. Did you try all 25 of his mixes? Yes. yes. <laughs> and I tried everything. There was one that was like peppermint oil. I tried literally every iteration you could ever possibly imagine. I put so much stuff in my vagina <laughs> and on my vulva that's like the, the, co- the peppermint oil one felt so good when you put it on because it was kind of cooling. And especially if you breathe on it, it felt amazing. And the second there was penetration, I was like, get this off of me. It's terrible. <laughs> That reminds me of we've had clients and I have sometimes said, you know, you can use a little bit of an Altoid to spice up oral sex. And I told them, you know, you bite it in four and to, and <laughs> called me back, burning, burning, 14 Altoids. I'm like, 14 Altoids, of course it's burning. I don't know what to do we to call the doctor. I mean, way too much. So tell me, where did the name come from? Lavinia. So Lavinia is a a, a Greek goddess. And what our brand is designed to do is just really empower people to ask questions, to talk about, to talk about sex in a really candid way um, to it's, it's really funny because we're cannabis based and we're sex based. We're really heavily in two very taboo <laughs> markets. So <laughs> I thought my Facebook marketing was hard. You can't, you're blocked every day too. <laughs> it's so difficult. It's, it's not, even, it's really, it's really sad to me because like, I think about me when I, you know, the 10 year old me who really wanted sexual education and couldn't receive any. And it's like, we have so many ways in which we're, we're blocking that. Yes, but hopefully hopefully cannabis will become a schedule two drug soon. And then that will allow us to do a lot more research. I deal with so many patients who have sexual dysfunction resulting from a health condition. They're recovering from cancer or heart disease or menopause or childbirth um, or trauma. There are so many different conditions um, that impact our sexual functioning. And most of the resources, I think, for women are not, one, there aren't a lot of resources for women. And two, the ones that are available, it's very difficult to market them and increase awareness about them because, you know, it's still, you know what it comes down to? Men are still running the world and God forbid women have satisfying sex, right? I mean, it's almost like, that like it's a crime for women to have an orgasm and i always remind people what is the purpose of an orgasm at all it's because god wanted sex to be pleasurable there's no biological purpose because women are supposed to enjoy it and so i'm really excited that you've developed a product that i think will help women enjoy it the way i think about it is it's like thc for the vagina it's i know that women have the best sex when they're relaxed So it's almost like the way I visualize Lavinia working is it's like, it relaxes the vagina so you can enjoy sex. (laughs) Just, it's like a glass of wine for your vagina, but not wine, you know, because we know alcohol does not have the same effects as cannabis. Um, But that's sort of the way I'm thinking about it. But tell me from your research and your experience and for everyone listening, I know everyone out there is thinking about, hmm, I have some weed at home. Can I do something with it? How does cannabis enhance sex or how does it impact sex? So cannabis is a vasodilator, which basically means, you know, when you smoke weed and your eyes turn red. Yes. I mean, when other people smoke weed and their eyes turn red. uh, Yeah, yeah. I've heard about it. Mm 
<laughs> yes. Yes. So what's actually happening is the blood vessels are increasing in size and the blood flow is increasing. And so anytime you have increased blood flow in that area, that's how women have really strong, really intense orgasms. And that's how men get erections. So it's kind of simplistic when you, when you think about it, right. But it's like, that's exactly what happens. And so cannabis is also really great in terms of like you were talking about before, um, performance anxieties. So the topical lube, um, doesn't have a psychoactive effect unless you go down on somebody when they're wearing it because then sublingually the THC will absorb and you will have a little bit of a head high. Um, but when you smoke weed or do have a gummy or something like that, that will give you a head high and that will relax you like you're saying, and that will make the experience so much more pleasurable. That's funny. So basically you could sort of advertise like I'm sex with benefits. Not yeah. only <laughs> you can do me, but you, I also could get you high, you know, yeah. and I won't even charge you. It's all free. <laughs> exactly. Um, I could think of a lot of potential partners who would enjoy that. They're like, yeah, okay, yeah girlfriend, please use that. Um, that's pretty cool. So um, has this been tried? Have you ever done any, I know this is a relatively new product, but I'm wondering, have you done studies with cancer survivors, like breast and ovarian cancer survivors? Not yet, but that is actually something that we're looking to do. Um, we looked into doing a clinical study because there is very little research on cannabis and there's almost no research on sex in cannabis. We're an R&D for an anal sex product. And so we, want to, we wanted to do a clinical study to show how like cannabis can enhance um, the you know pleasurable experience of sex. But that's actually a really, uh, that's a really interesting idea. They're, all of the research that we've done has basically been in-house. There's a vibrator called the Lioness that has sensors on the side that records the pulsing of the vaginal walls during a sexual experience. So it's really cool. I actually have it here. Like we actually have data on orgasms. And so it's like literally recording the pulsing and you can just see because the increased blood flow with OHI, it just makes everything so much more pleasurable. Absolutely. And for people out there who might be a little lost when we keep talking about blood flow, basically when you're sexually excited, all of your blood rushes to your genital region. A woman functions exactly the same way when her clitoris becomes firm and her lips become engorged. That's just because the blood has rushed down into the right regions. And when people have sexual dysfunction, very often it's because the blood is not doing what it's supposed to do. It's not circulating. Someone might have desire in their brain, but it's not circulating and doing what it needs to do. So when Katie talked about it being a vasodilator, dilator, she's basically saying that it opens up your blood vessels so that the blood can circulate and rush down to your southern regions, which is exactly where you want the blood to be when you're sexually excited. Now, we already talked about patients who might be helped by this. Have you ever heard of any stories from women who have been patients or experienced trauma who have been helped by this? Absolutely. I think the statistic now is one in three women have had some kind of sexual trauma, which that statistic to me is mind blowing because that number is way too high. Um, but I have a girlfriend that was actually in our beta testing group and she was raped and she uh, would often have an orgasm from the pain. It was sex was so painful. She would cry. She would try to hold her partner in a specific way so they couldn't see the tears coming down. And because of the increased blood flow, she was actually able for the first time ever to experience pleasure and to have actual orgasms from pleasure, not from pain. That's such a beautiful story. I do some trainings with Planned Parenthood and that would be really important information that I'll share with them because sex after trauma, as you said, one in three women experiences a traumatic sexual event. That's one in three that we know about. So it's probably higher. There's basically like no help to help this group of women regain traction in their sex life. So that's really exciting news. So where's Lavinia sold? Like, do we need a doctor's prescription? Do we get it at a dispensary? Is it on Amazon? Where do we get it? Currently, we are sold in dispensaries in the state of California. We are working on a hemp line that will be avail available nationwide. Which is wow. Exciting. So you are in dispensaries in California. That's very cool. And soon you'll have a nationwide line made from hemp. Correct. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And... Tell me, what has the response been so far? How long have you been selling it and what has the response been? So we've launched September of last year. The response has been pretty freaking great. Um, I had a woman come up to me and, oh my gosh, I'm like getting emotional talking about it. She came up to me and she hugged me and said that she had never had an orgasm before and she was 56 years old. 
Oh, which is to me such an honor that we can, you know, take part in her journey. Wow. That is awesome. I know a lot of women who have never had an orgasm and it would be really interesting when you're ready to do those clinical trials. You remember me, I'd be excited to participate, not well, yes, participate, but also I'd be as an investigator, I'd be excited to help you further that research along. That would be amazing. So the response has been great. Women are having orgasms when they haven't had them in the past. And are you working on any pro- any other products besides this one? Yes. So our whole goal is to enhance people's sex life through cannabis. So we have this, the lubricant. Um, we are very close to launching with an anal sex product, which I'm so excited about because personally, I cannot have an orgasm with anal. And with this product, I do. Um, so I'm, I'm really, really excited. Um, yeah, (laughs) that's a really big deal. I do a lot of work, um, with different communities. And whenever I give a talk to people on the LGBTQ spectrum, we talk about like, are there anal Kegels or what if anal sex is painful? Should I take poppers? And I'm like, no, you shouldn't take (laughs) poppers. You have to be in tune with your sense of But I know that there are a limited number of interventions available to decrease sex, to decrease pain with anal sex. So that's very, very cool. It's really fun to just have really candid conversations about something that a lot of people don't talk about, which is it's it's been really amazing. And it, it, it feels really exciting from my point of view, too, because it's really the cutting edge. Like there really isn't there's zero research on anal sex and cannabis. So we're we're kind of like paving the way, which has been really fun. So if someone is not in California, how can they find out more information about Lavinia? So you could follow us on Instagram, o.lavinia, or uh, our website is olavinia.com. But stay tuned because we are launching our hemp line very soon. We're just, we're just finishing up the final formula formula. So it's coming very shortly and hopefully you will be too. Oh, that's very good. I like that. (laughs) Dad jokes coming up. um, I think recreational marijuana will be available in many, many more states very soon. And I think as the laws change and they are rapidly changing, um, we'll be able to see um, Lavinia in more states as well. At least that's my hope. And I'm very interested in doing research on patient populations as well. I do a lot of work with people living with HIV. And after an HIV diagnosis, people, the quality of their sex goes down. And a lot of it is due to really anxiety and things that make you not relaxed, you know? So I think that this is going to be really interesting. We will be watching your growth and here to support you. Let us know um, what we can do to support you. I would say mail some to me, but I guess that's illegal because you're mailing marijuana across state lines. Well, the hemp line Um, I can mail to you. Well, there you go. So we'll have to be, um, what is that? Postcard buddies. Isn't that? I was like, we've been emailing for so many years. I was like, what's the word when you write letters to someone? (laughs) It was really great meeting you, Katie. And I think that you're a wonderful representative of the product too. You're so friendly and outgoing and you remind people that everybody does deserve better sex or at least the best sex that they can possibly have. Even if they're really religious, even if they want to please God, you know, it is still okay when you engage in sex to feel pleasure. As a matter of fact, it's not just okay, you should feel pleasure. And Lavinia can help you do that. Is that right? Amen. Amen, sister. (laughs) All right, you guys. It was so much fun chatting you up today. For your daily dose of Nookie Knowledge, check me out on all the social media networks. That's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Come on, baby. You know you want to link up. You guys, I had so much fun talking with you and Katie about putting a little bit of weed inside your special sexy parts and how THC can actually enhance your sexual experience. I can't wait to see how this product is going to grow. And I can't wait to talk to you guys again next time. I'm Dr. Sanjaya. This is Sex in South Beach, where everyone comes for happier, healthier sex. Don't you deserve great sex? 
Turn on the Sex and South Beach podcast to level up your love life. Sex and South Beach, hosted by Dr. Sanjaya, America's only Ivy League educated sexologist and medical professor at the University of Miami. Find Sex and South Beach on iTunes, Pandora, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Sex and South Beach, where everyone comes for happier, healthier sex.